<clears throat> it's March 6th, 2015, and um, I was just talking about, and I haven't taken um, a few seconds or minutes to myself um, from the last clip. I just am proceeding now with the next one. So I'm talking about what the government did when they dropped me into the big fish tank. Well, it wasn't like a little fish tank. It was, um, it was like a sea world, like a San Diego sea world kind of a fish tank. It was an enormous, um, aquarium thing that maybe you might put like one fish in for a while to isolate it, maybe like a very large, large, huge fish, like maybe a shark or maybe some kind of big fish. And, um, so it was this huge holding tank, and then um, it had clear plexiglass or whatever those things are made out of, so that um, on the top, you know, there was like a deck around and everything, and um, people could come up to it, and then you could stand around the edge, and there was water, and then there was the tank, of course, and the water. And then it went down um down from the surface area all the way down to like an entire story or more of a building so that the people who were um so the people who were inside of the building could stand there around that plexiglass and see you know watch the fish i guess or or watch whatever they were watching under observation um which is why they had that tank and what was what they did at that place, I guess. So, um, so this is like a huge tank. And, um, if you've ever seen the uh, music video to Duran Duran's song, Come Undone, and they, um, drop a woman into the water, so that's what they did to me. Uh, pretty much that music video looks um, almost exactly like what they did to me. It, it, it's uh, very close. The difference is that um, is that I I think in that video she has a swimsuit on and I didn't have a swimsuit. They were letting me to strip um, naked. And anyway, so what happened is um, they said you want to do it yourself don't you? And um, I said yes. And I think I have um, some kind of a British <laughs> Australian <laughs> filtering into um, the way I'm pronouncing things for some reason right now. And um, <laughs> And uh, the, the reason for that, I'm just not going to get into. But <clears throat> but anyway, um, so I said yes. And they said, well, um, that's not how it works. Something like that. And uh, one of them then raped me right there. Uh, vaginally raped me. Um around some other people that were standing there and I was screaming and um, they were holding me down and um, you know this was not like the mafia group or something this was the government and um, and then someone screamed and shouted and they said we're going to drop you down here and they said you see this um, see what we're putting on you they said all oh, this these clothes and this, this bag or whatever this cover he said it has chains. You see how the chains are wrapped all around it? And they said, um, when we drop you into this tank, the only way that you're going to be able to get out of your chains is if you take off all your clothes. And um, you have to get um, take this off and uh, be naked or whatever. And um, And they said, and you're going to do it yourself. So that's, this is what you have to do if you want to do it yourself. Are you sure you want to do it yourself? 
them and I was like screaming, you know, and then some woman said, um, she what she said, no, no. And they said, nope, she wants to do it herself. She has to do it herself. So they dropped me, um, chained up in, and wrapped in this, some clothes and cloth of some kind. Um, they dropped me into the tank. And um, they cut me on the leg, too, so I was bleeding from a couple of different areas. I mean, I, was, I had been raped, and I was also bleeding because I got slashed. And when I was down, you know, I sank because the chains were so heavy. It's just pretty much like that that um, music video. And I'm sure that music video, the people who did that got an idea from what happened to me or maybe to other people, too, because um, there was someone in that observation room video taking everything because when they dropped me down in there, I could see the people on the other side of the glass and who they were and how many there were and I could see that someone was videotaping everything. And um, so basically they said, if they had said before they dropped me and they said either you, you, um, you take off your clothes or you die. And most people would think, well, maybe if, maybe they were just bluffing because do you really think that you would have died um, if you hadn't done what they told you to do or whatever and the thing is is I've seen them do so many horrible things to others myself um, yeah I did believe that I might die because they always threatened me too that one of these days we're going to kill you so I did think that if I um, I did believe that if I passed out on the water and started to drown, I did not. I did think that they would let me die. I didn't believe anyone was going to come rescue me, and so um, I was down there uh, um, underwater, and I was thinking to myself that I could get out of these chains without doing what they were telling me to do. You just take off, take off these clothes, and uh, be stark naked in front of all these people who are not just adults; they're like people my age, she was like my peers too. And um, so I tried to do that and I couldn't. And um, I was down there for a while. And then um, as it turned out, I was starting, I, was, I would have probably passed out. And so I, so I did, I, I um, took those clothes off or whatever that had the chains on them. And um, and then went up to the surface, you know, like that. And when I got up to the surface, um, there was a group of people waiting for me. And they said, you see, you're not any better than anyone else. You're just like the rest of us. You're not a saint. I said, you're a slut. Um, you know, you think you're so good. And really, you're a slut. You just took off your clothes and exposed yourself and naked to everybody. And um, and that's that's what happens when you say you want to do it yourself. So you know, you choose you chose to um, do it yourself. You didn't want anybody's help. So you know since you don't want anybody's help, that's the kind of thing you're going to run into. And then um, they didn't really go into this big lecture, but some of that was kind of interspersed at various times around that time. And then what happened is then, as soon as I had surfaced up to the um, top, they uh, raped me again. And two or three men, different men, raped me. And, um, and then I blacked out. I think maybe someone injected me with something because I was screaming. But I, um, I blacked out. And... And later when I woke up, he was like, oh, it never happened. And so um, that had that scene had also played out in another location. And um, some, something almost exactly like that had happened over there, too. And the whole idea was that I was getting punished because um, basically... I was getting punished because if I wasn't going to work with them, they were going to rape me. You know, they didn't put it that way. They they just said, "You don't want our, you don't want anyone's help," and so this is what happens. 
But the reality was that um, they wanted their employees to be able to sexually abuse me and use me um, for free and um, and torture me, have me working for them for free. I don't mean like sexual working, but also like working in um, like different jobs, doing different things. And um, if I decided, no, I mean, they, were, they didn't give me some kind of great uh, job offer, you know, or um, real, um, I mean, they already knew I didn't want to work for them anyway. You know, you don't rape a kid repeatedly and torture them and then um, expect them, and I don't think they ever did expect me to want to serve them and work with them when that's what they've done to me my entire life. And <clears throat> so then they were basically trying to punish me um, and saying, well, if you're not going to work with us, then then basically what they did is they raped me and they tortured me and um, did all other kinds of things. And they tried to make that humiliating situation and um, that violent situation of dropping me into a tank, making me strip and degrading me and embracing me. Um, they made that into their lesson for me about um, how you know you you do need people, and um, I never said I didn't need people. What I had said to them is that I don't need you. I don't need you to torture and abuse and rape me to be telling me what to do and trying to control my life. Because I'm sure if you um, if you quit torturing me and you backed off and you hadn't stolen everything from me, I'm quite sure that I would have done just fine on my own. So um, all they did was you know one thing after the other, and then they tried to make it into like you know this is a great terrible lesson kind of a thing, and. So, um, so when I was a, so when I, how that diverges from um, what I am describing with Mike Tanzer is because with Mike Tanzer as well as with some of these other government kids who were the sons of government employees and then grew up and um, assaulted me, um, they had this whole thing, kind of theme going of, um, we're going to rape you and torture you. And that was just, dropping me to a tank was just one example. Another example of things that they did to me was they, um, and the green things, they made me pole dance in a suit and said, said, oh yeah, you can pretend to be a lawyer. And, and they had put it to me in a, in a way to make it sound like I was going to be acting, like I was supposed to just put on an act. And if I did a really good job acting, they'd give me a lot of money and a job in some kind of um, fun capacity of like kind of like acting, um, not maybe acting exactly, but but some sort of job where I would be having to act sometimes or whatever. Well, um, that's how they put it to me, and all they were doing was lying, and they basically just wanted to use the entire event to degrade me, and they had video cameras out again, had me dancing around a pole, and this is like all during the time, this was, that pole thing was um, prior to when they took my baby from me, because it was prior to my becoming pregnant, but they, um, they were already planning on, you know, planning what they wanted to do, and kidnapping the baby from me, so they had this joke going ahead of me, of having me dance on the, on a pole, which they had said would be for getting a, a job, which was like supposed to be like some kind of professional job or a government job, which at first, at the time back then, I had thought possibly that it would get paid really well, that might be something that I could do. But what it turned out to be is just another one of their attempts to um, humiliate and degrade me and to videotape me. And, you know, where they were sitting on these videotapes, I really don't know, but sure they were using it to um, harass and distress someone who cared about me. And 
um, I will describe this in the next.